All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to um, animate pouring water. What I have set up here is a simple mug that we're going to have the water pour into. Um, I made it with a spline and a lathe modifier and just extruded the handle out along a spline. I do just want to give you a heads up that I'm not going to be able to walk you through the entire tutorial just because my laptop here lacks RAM and I unfortunately um, can't go through with all of it. Uh, my computer ends up just crashing and it's all a mess. So what I'm going to have us start doing is you're going to go to your create tab and you want to go to your top viewport um, and create a super spray particle system. So if you go to your create tab, drop down to particle systems, you will see super spray right in there. Just like any other primitive, you can click and drag and you will see it come up in your viewport. Um, right now our super spray is pointing up. So if we were to buffer our time slider here, you would see that all of our particles are going up. So what we need to actually do is, you guessed it, rotate it right down. Um, I don't want it going in totally straight, so I'm just going to tilt it at a little bit of an angle here. Alright, so that's what it should look like at this point in time. Um, so we've created the particle system with this stream of water, and we want to add a gravity space warp to direct the stream. But first, let's adjust some of the parameters of the super spray. We want to go to our modify tab, and under particle formation, we want our off axis to be 15 and our off-plane spread to be about 15 as well. This is just going to add some variation to our stream. And again, you can realign uh, your particle system here. And in our viewport display, if we scroll down a little bit, let's just display 50% of the particles. Um, this isn't using as much RAM, but at least we'll be able to see um, a more likely view of what this is going to look like. For example, since we're still only on ticks in our viewport display, I'll show you what 100 looks like. Um, we have a little bit more of a dense accumulation of particles there. So let's keep it at 50. So where we adjusted the particle formation, um, this is going to cause the particle dispersion to spread over a conic area, um, which is being created by the system up here. So obviously larger spread values are going to result in a wider cone. Alright, so next we're going to adjust the speed, the quantity, and the size of the particles um, to make it look as much like water as we can. So we want to scroll down here. I'm just going to maximize this a little bit. To particle generation, we're going to keep this at 10. Um, our particle motion, instead of 10 here, it's a little bit too fast, we're going to have it at 3. And then our particle timing, um, this is saying when we want our particles to stop, when we want them to end. So let's say we want them to start at 0, um, we're, they're going to stop at frame 100, and we're going to display the particles until frame 100, um, but they're going to have a life of 70. So I'll show you what this looks like. So right now I'm at frame 35. So if I press play, they're going to keep on going, but they're really going to stop at 70. I um, usually can see this if you have more frames, but for now, 100 is good for this tutorial. So for our particle size, if we go down a little bit further, um, let's bump up the size to like 20. And maybe have a variation of 50%. Um, this means some particles are going to be larger than others and it'll just give us a more free-form look. So here, you can see our particles forming. They look pretty good so far. So what we want to do now is, now that we, since our particles are set up, let's go back to our top viewport, and we want to set up a gravity space warp. So go to your Create tab. Go to um, your Space Warps. And under forces, you should see gravity. Um, again, you can click and drag. It doesn't matter where this is in the viewport. Um, 
this is going to end up affecting your entire scene anyway. And adding the gravity effect is going to give the falling water a more natural look. So positioning this, the space warp isn't super important um, because it's not going to vary with distance and it'll be applied throughout the world space. So we're going to bind this to the space warp. It's just like linking it um, to the super spray up here, but we use this fun little button called bind to space warp. And you see that when I hover over this gravity um, gravity force here, it has this icon over it. I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag till this line pops up. And I'm going to put it over my super spray and boom, it turns white. It is linked. It looks good. So now the water is just going to naturally go towards the floor. You see how that's a little bit stronger tension, or a little bit stronger drive towards the ground. So again, let's just recenter this a little bit. So what we want to do now is we want to make sure that the particles are bouncing off of the coffee mug. Um, we don't want them going through the mug like we currently see here. So what we need to do is we're going to stay under space warps and we're going to go to deflectors and we're going to drag out a U deflector. So this means that as the particles are hitting the bottom of the coffee mug, they're not going to go through. They're really just going to circulate around in the coffee mug and essentially bounce off in this U or V direction, whichever you prefer. So with our deflector selected, we're going to also bind that to the super spray. And we also want to go to the modify tab and we want to deflect these particles off of the mug. So we're going to click on the mug from pick object and what you're going to see is if I press this play button we'll get a viewport it makes this easy you're going to see some particles that are bouncing all around the place again my computer is going to take some time to generate this animation but you can see that the bounce is a little bit too, too much we have a very chaotic scene here so What you might want to do is just adjust this bounce to maybe 0.1. That's plenty. And my computer will decide to be slow. Just for the rendering sake, I'm going to decrease the super spray down to like 10%. Um, you get the idea here. I just want to save some memory, or as much memory as I can at least. So what we really want to do now is we want to start giving this water some body. Um, right now it just looks like a bunch of ticks, which is what we don't want. So this is where I'm only going to be able to show you part of the tutorial before my computer freezes. So what we want to do is we want to select the super spray stream, which we already have. Um, I've just decreased this percentage of particles, but if you want to see the entire stream um, of whatever you're pouring, you might want to bump this up to 100 if your computer can support it. And we want to go to particle types, which is right under particle generation. We want meta particles. And we'll let this load. And you can adjust the, the tension here. Um, it's kind of saying how, how close do you want this the particles to be together. Um, you can kind of pick and choose. Again, I'm just going to say 0.1. It might be different for your project. And what we can do, eh, let's actually put this at 0.5. And then in our viewport display, we want this to be displayed as a mesh. So this is going to make our entire scene just have these nice big blobs. Um, what you might notice is some of your blobs still going through here. Um, we can end up tackling that a little bit later on. But if you can picture all of your particles at 100% coming out, um, that'll look really good. So 
So let's go ahead and see what the status is here with our water particles going through. All right, check your U deflector. Um, your line basic deflector is selected uh, on the glass, so that's good. Sometimes what helps is if you do use a lathe modifier. Um, it doesn't have enough geometry to really hold any other objects, so it's it's a bit transparent, if you will. So if you want to try adding the shell modifier um, to give it a little bit of girth, you can try that. But what you're going to end up seeing, and my computer is slowly coming to a crash, is you're going to see these water particles generate, but they're actually not going to gather in the bottom um, like you see here. They're going to generate and then they're going to quickly disappear. So what you want to do is your particles are going to already be animated and you need to actually animate a sphere I'm sorry a cylinder I'll show you this looks like really quick 